Welcome. This is Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. It's the 23rd of June, 2023, Asia time. Topics on my list, Google Summer of Code, open pull requests of interest, and a possible discussion and review of Java 11 to Java 17 changes in the documentation. Uh, that one I call a possible because I'm a little weary tonight, so we're going to limit ourselves to probably not more than about 20, 20 minutes. Any other topics you'd like to be sure we put on the agenda? Looks good to me. Looks All right, good. so... Ashutosh, tell us about how things are going on the Docker Docker Quick Start. Uh, uh, things uh, things are going a little slow this week, but uh, we have created a working example uh, with uh, jobs too. It already has one job. Uh, you can let me share a link. Great. Okay. So, are you okay if we look at the link together or at the at the example together? Yes. 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 Um, this one is I shared the link. Great. Okay. So let's, here's what, all right. Uh, experiment Docker. Uh, okay. Yes, experiment. Second example. Zero two. And so if I clone your repository, are you okay if I just build it myself locally? Yes. Great. All right, let's do it. Uh, there is a uh, keygen script before, uh, right there. Uh, you can run it uh, to generate your own keys so that uh, for connecting uh, agent, uh, Jenkins agent with controller, uh, it generates new SSH keys every time to be secure. Okay, just a moment. Let's. Okay, oops, that would help if I give the correct clone command. There we go. All right, so here is my GSOC repository. And you say experimental Docker compose files and then O2. Yeah. Uh, this one. This branch doesn't have the SSH keys. SSH oh, okay. uh, script is in different branch. All right. So which branch is there a particular branch you, you recommend I be on? One of the pull request branches or yes, this this one first one, new feature one. Okay. So how about 42? Feature. Yes. All right, good. Okay, so here we are. Uh, first render the script, then Docker Compose up with D. Okay, and so it creates... Oh, good, okay, it does it locally. So it's not, not putting them into my, into my set of keys. Okay, good. And then Docker, Docker Compose, Compose up. D. And I think that's, is that enough right there? Just Docker compose up? You can add the D option to free up the terminal later. Sorry, the minus D option for what? Uh, it frees up the terminal after the containers are running. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm not. So Docker compose up. Minus oh, you, you're using the previous Docker Compose. You have to add a slash it's between Docker and Compose, I think. Oh, okay. Docker dash Compose. Yes. Like that? Yes. Okay. All right. So it's building, downloading plugins. It, it uses a custom Docker file right now to build the image locally. Good. Well, that's an interesting choice of uh, upgrade state. That's fun. Yeah, that's um, we do plan to remove afterwards. It's because of faster to make things fast go faster right now. Okay. So I've currently got something listening on port 8080. Let me do a quick check to see if I can interrupt it. I was 
trying to duplicate a bug. Just a moment. You got, you got an error because you're... Port collision. Port yeah, and that's yeah. no shock. I knew I had a I knew I had a colliding service on it. So that's not a problem. I just wanted to see if my my tests okay, my tests have passed far enough that the bug I was trying to duplicate can't be duplicated. Good. So I will just go interrupt that. Okay, now let's do that compose up again. Okay, so now if I look at a Docker PS, there is an SSH, SSH agent running separately and a Jenkins controller. Okay, and did it export the port 8080? Whoops, wrong one. Home, testing dash A. It did. Very nice. Okay, um, although. Admin, admin. Right now it's ah okay all right and here I am with an agent and the agent oh, the has a nice job is not configured in this uh, branch it's in separate branch I think this one was created earlier and that one was merged so job is not here right now but it's added in the main branch excellent okay. I know I have to I have to do some of my usual experiments. So let's see what kind of agent we've actually got there. And then updates. Let's update all the plugins to latest releases and see if the updates persist across a restart. Okay, so it's restarting. I'd click the restart and will it keep running? Should I have to start that before? So you you configured it with the on what was it on restart on failure? Yes, thank you. Okay, restart on failure is configured. Very good. Okay, so patience. Apparently, I need a faster computer. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, yeah. and plugins are up to date. And Jenkins URL is empty, but I am going to configure it because I know yeah, what we, it should be. And it, it got no the correct value. Issue. Oh, very good. Oh my, very impressive. Okay, so now how did it, that's, that's, it's inside a container and yet it got the correct address. Very nice. That's oh. uh, actually in my testing, it was not getting correct address. I don't know how it did this time. Okay, well, now I am running somewhere other than localhost, right? So I connected my web browser to a, a fully qualified yes. domain name. Maybe yes. you connect your web browser to localhost? Yes, yes. That's okay, and, and that would do it then, because what Jenkins does is it uses the address in the web browser somehow to, to populate that field. Nice. Okay. Uh, well, uh, we do plan to use uh, the uh, update wizard uh, on when we upload it and mainly so it will uh, john mark mentioned that it will solve that problem very we do good. have an open issue right now uh, regarding that warning with uh, url okay and and okay and i see it here's the indicator all right so this agent that you've got configured there is running debian debian the debian debian operating system inside the or the debian utilities inside that inside that agent and if i look at the the root contain at the root machine let's see how do i change it let's give it oh it's got the same labels good it's also running debian as expected very nice okay uh, good. this one didn't have a job uh you can run a job example job to test if it's using right so if agent. i create uh hello as a pipeline job and I go click and say, let's do this hello world, boom, R build now. And if you got declarative pipeline installed, that should work. You did, very good. Nicely done, Ashutosh, very nicely done. Impressive. Wow. Thank you. Nice. 
Okay, so now what changed here? Oh, the SSH key changed. Okay, that makes sense. So what, and your record, oh, good. And you chose the right SSH key form. Well done. Thank you very, very much. Yes, we did have an error with uh, RSA. It was not working that, so we shifted to ED2. Well, and, and I prefer ED25519 because there are at least some voices in the security community who say it's slightly more secure, and I like it because it's much less text. That is my kind of public key, tiny little thing. And so uh, after this, we are working on the tutorials that uh, uses uh, Docker, the previous Docker commands. Uh, there are four, I think. We have open issues regarding them, and the, and right now the mid uh, mid evaluation is coming. So on six July, so this week I think I'll be working towards that. Very good, congratulations. So the ones that 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 gives me hope that as you're making progress towards the ones that I was dreaming of were these, right? The yes, build a the, Java app, and so you're yes, aware of these. Please. This this These terrible and... awful awful thing here. Yes. <laughs> these it's three not and the one. Yes. And these three and there is one with no, pipeline one also. Ah, okay. So there's there's an additional one that I'd missed. That's. Uh, it's. Uh, is it this one? No, no not Jenkins file pipe... under. It's on pipeline section above. Ah, yes. okay. All right. So it's probably this one, end to end. Yes, yes. Good. All right. That that is marvelous. Okay. So so just as a check. All right. And you, very nice. You didn't include Blue Ocean in this particular yes. image. Uh, cool. But it, but we also don't have the pipeline graph. Graph is that right? We yes. don't have this one. This one doesn't have. Uh, the tutorials one uh, we are working on tutorials one that in which we'll include the pipeline graph view okay instead of please oh oh good so you're going to go for pipeline graph view instead of blue ocean in the tutorial yes that's what uh but uh, we haven't decided yet fully but i was thinking that i certainly i certainly like that i think this is a good excuse to consider a break to consider yes. a break from the past, right? Because why not use the new thing instead of carrying along all the baggage of the old thing? So graph view, pipeline graph view is, there we go, this one. That's exceptional, Ashutosh. Anything else you'd like to show us? Uh, there was a, one example of job, but we already did run job, so I guess that's it. Now, and tell me about the storage. How does, just for my own education, does this use volumes? Yes, uh, right now, I'm forgetting. And yes, so it does, does it use named volumes or un unnamed volumes? Yes, right now it does use named volume. Okay, so this is probably the named volume, the yes. zero 02. Okay. Yes. So will that volume then persist even after I, I even after I stop the the Docker container? Yes. Uh, if you for if you do want to uh, uh, delete the volume too, you'll have to use Docker Compose down slash less volume okay but so if i do for example if i do a docker compose down now it will volume, it will preserve it will... the volume will survive yes so i do a docker compose down and it shut down let's see i bet that is okay these are the containers containers network and Ah, okay. So it really, when I did Docker Compose down, it actually removed the network as well. Yes, but the volume is still there. 
Okay, and then when I do a Docker Compose up, oops, remind myself, Docker dash Compose. And now if we wait patiently for this to start, and the job will still be there. It won't have been lost. So my, there it is. Okay, now the, the complication then for a tutorial user is they may end, or, or do you envision using a different volume for each tutorial? No, we, we did have a, uh in discussion about if we should use uh, this volume named volume or not uh -huh. uh, since it uses but we didn't decide we uh, we didn't completely decide if we, uh, what we'll use in the end but right now we are using the input well, and that that sounds great to me i was just curious so if a uh... I'm not sure how users, if users tend to do one tutorial and then stop, or if they do two, two or more tutorials. And I was worried if they, if we have a single volume, is there a risk that the two tutorials might collide with each other by using the same volume? That is a valid issue. Yeah. So that's, that's very elegant, nicely done. Congratulations, Ashutosh. Anything else you'd like to let me put the link to your to your repository here so that we've got it. We created a job, ran the job, watched it run on the agent. We installed the plugin, right? I confirmed it worked. Saw that the agent and the controller were Debian. Very nice. And so then you said that the next step, next target is the next sort of big target is uh, right. using Docker inside somehow? Yes, and the like, tutorials need Docker and Docker to work. So we'll have to figure that out. Yeah, so, and and I, I am not, I am not clear how that, how you'll do that, but we know we have a working example, well, sort of, we have a working example in the current tutorial, but it does not use an agent. Yes, uh, we were thinking of creating Docker in Docker, but uh, example, what we decided it will be, uh, it is a security risk, so we'll right. put that towards the end. But for yeah. tutorial, we will need it. A exactly. See, that was that was one of the things that I, I look forward to you exploring, to to see what what alternatives are there for easy execution of docker oper operations in an environment that's already running in docker and that that's that's the place where i well this horror right here i'm delighted it works but it is scary what it's doing right i mean it's it's doing it's doing things that this docker and docker stuff is doing things that are have security risks Good, very good. Anything else you want to want to share uh, with us? So next, uh, uh, this week and next week, I'll probably be working to uh, on the midterm presentation too. All right. So Meg, I've got a question for you and for me then. So let's go to, I, I want to look at the Jenkins, at the installation instructions ah. for Docker. So installing Jenkins on Docker, if I remember correctly, it does a full Docker in Docker even here. 
Yes. It, uh, okay, Ashutosh, you'd already seen it. It does. Yeah. So so we need the same the same technique here as we need in the tutorials because it's this is also doing Docker and Docker and it was doing it specifically because we wanted people to be able to use the same pattern to do this as they did tutorials. Good. Okay, great. Nice, nice. Needed for needed by four tutorials and the Docker install instructions. Good. Very, very good. Anything else, Ashutosh? No, nothing else. Okay. How about we take the next topic then? I'd made myself a promise that I'd get done by in about 20 minutes. We're a little over. Meg, if you're okay, I'd like to take the just this one topic on the open pull requests of interest. We've got you remember Jeffrey Chen had submitted a pull request that you had evaluated, you had reviewed. Right. And the old wiki stuff, right? Exactly. It was a migration of two things, the administrative, some administrating material and a best practices page. And mm -hmm. so I started working on it last weekend. And while working on it, found that, hey, I couldn't make changes to it. So I ultimately ended up taking Jeffrey's work, but I closed the pull request. So kept all of his commits, but closed the pull request and then split it into two pull requests. Uh -huh. So because the original thing was targeting both administering Jenkins and best practices, the split into two was one half for administering Jenkins and one half for best practices. And the, the administering Jenkins piece I felt like was well enough reviewed after your reviews and Kevin's reviews that earlier today during Doc's Office Hours Europe, I merged it. All right. And so what we'll see is that Jeffrey's work here and the things that I had added to it ultimately did end up in the book right here. Let's go look at it. So I think it's in, is it managing Jenkins, configuring the system? Here's oh, the Jenkins no home directory. Blank. Oh, nice. Oh, and it's no longer a work in progress, right? Yes. <laughs> so so a, a win there. Now the next step needs more text. And that's this, this best practices thing, because what I feel like is recommending best practices is a dangerous statement of opinion right and we want to have good opinions before we go all the way right so i took the text that was there and then i added a bunch of my own opinions and, and of course that's dangerous but that's what i want and, and i had some places where i said we need more words and kevin said we don't take that out that's junk and my answer was no it, it we really need more words there Right. See, I have nothing against best practices if you get a disagreement. You can say some people recommend doing this because of this. Right. And other people, it's very Talmudic, but but it works. It's uh, well, 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 but using a Talmudic approach, I think, is the right approach. It's, hey, let's talk about the compromises because the word best in this case miss might be misperceived as the one true way and that's not what it's describing right it's describing right. for a particular set of circumstances here are a set of good practices that have worked for some people and we've gotten the convention of calling them best practices and it's awful and you know but it should be good practices you're absolutely right so yeah yeah ex exactly and and a software testing community that i'm in uh, loves to 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 berate the use of the word best in that case because it's a it's what a superlative it's it's a maximal thing and and the usual answer is nonsense they're not maximal right but the cool thing about this one is that Darren has four or five videos that are now embedded in this ah and so let's go look at it briefly to see how it looks in the in the in the prototype because. I think it's the right approach. Now, one of the problems with this approach is it's, well, it's imperfect like anything. But here, if we look at using Jenkins best practices, 
what you'll see is a series of videos that are almost back to back with each other. GitHub organization folder, GitLab group, uh huh, Bitbucket team or project or Giddy organization folder. Now I could separate each of them with a heading or with some text, but they are most most of our users will have exactly one of these and no more. Right. And so having them choose now, now maybe it would be better if there were subheadings here so that in the table of contents under organization folders, they could click GitHub, Giddy, Bitbucket, because that might get them closer navigation. Right. The other thing that um, I haven't seen these videos, but is there like, do these, do you have two or three points that are like your summary takeaways? Because the problem, one of the things that bugs me with the embedded videos is it's a 20 minute video and I watched it and I liked it. And there were a couple of things. And it's like, what exactly did they say? And mm. it's, this does not fast forward as nicely as my TiVo does. Right. And I sit here trying to jump around. It's like, where was that gem? If there are a couple of gems that could be out there or um, the other thing is summary commands that I could copy and paste. It's very hard to copy and paste out of a video. Good, and good I suggestion. And that would give us an excuse then to put headings and to put a brief two or three or four bullet summary of, of that video segment. And then same for this video segment and same for this video segment. Good idea. Yeah. I like that. It's, it's the stuff that I, after I've watched the video three times and consumed it, the stuff I want to go back to quickly and grab. Right, right. So what you're saying is there, there. it is far better to illustrate the hot spots with text, copyable mm -hmm. text. Good. I like that. Okay. Yeah. Good suggestion. Now the others. Yeah, see, these were... These were okay. Now we're really getting into Mark Wade opinion mode, and this is <laughs> this is this is a, a dangerous world, right? But ah, uh, it's a good world. I you go a opine all you want, right? So, um, what I started with was, hey, first choice, you should use organization folders. They are the most efficient way to do it. It means you 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 create one job, and it will create multi-branch folders for every repository and jobs for every branch and uh -huh. massive automation. But there may be cases where multi-branch, where organization folders aren't quite what you need. Okay. You could then step down one level and do multi-branch pipelines. And it's, Hey, if something prevents you from using organization folders, then at least use multi-branch pipelines. And this is where the needs more wisdom. Um, why is multi-branch pipelines not a link to the chap the page about multi-branch pipelines? Organization yeah. folders was. Uh, I'm not sure sentence. I understand the question. First sentence. Wait a minute. Go go back where you were. See organizational okay. folders that said in the line just ahead. It's it ends. But help me. Oh wait. Okay. Just above this one. Refer to the organization folders documentation for more details. Right. Now, now go down. Okay, so now you want me to go down here to and, see this one where it says there it says if something prevents you from using organization folders, then use multi-branch pipelines. So I'm saying there multi-branch pipelines should link to Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, good. All right. That's a that's a good good suggestion. I should probably follow the same pattern. Let's see. Well, let me think about that. Okay, because the what I did was since this set the closing sentence had the hyperlink in it here, I put the closing sentence with the hyperlink here as well. But what you're saying, oh, I is, see. Okay, now, but but it may but be it, that this wording is so weak right now, that's why you're even seeing this word at the end of this, that's right. This I was text at the end. I would say keep it in the back of your mind till you get the more words in and see right. what you've got, right? Good. Um, and also I would have, will those sections link back to this? They they would generally not because best practices for me are a high level summary and the documentation is a detail and there's not much gain for the user to jump back to the best practices stuff. Yeah. 
I don't know. I, I like lots of links. I, and some people complain about getting stuck in a circle. And I don't, because you never know where people are going to start. Right. And, and now, now this is one where, where it's, it might be worthwhile to consider. So this page, for instance, this is actually a page that Kevin Martin's detected was not in the, in the list on the left. It was not in the index on the left. Oh, so he moved it. He put it there correctly. Uh -huh. Very nice. But it, it's rather older descriptions of some things. And so for instance, it mentions GitHub organization or Bitbucket team when in fact, right now we have five or six organization folder implementations, uh -huh. GitHub, Bitbucket, Giddy, GitLab, Tulip, and I think maybe even one other. Okay. So, so we've got multiple implementations of these, and I think they're actually mentioned all the way at the bottom. Nope, nope, they aren't. They sh there is a page that mentions which ones are full organization folder implementations. So, so this page may may benefit some from at least some minor rewrite. Right. Okay. So that was the that was the one I wanted to show, and I think I've I think I've extracted the topics I needed from from it, which is there are things to improve on the best practices page, and maybe one is a disclaimer describing that the words the word best doesn't actually mean best. It means. Right. In some context, for some people, these have been good practices that have worked for them reasonably well. Uh huh. Okay. So, all right. Well, any other topics I'd propose, given my level of weariness, and Ashutosh, let you get some sleep as well. Oh no, it's start of your day. Get let you have a good day today. That we call today for done, unless there's something else you wanted to go over, Meg. Nope, sounds good to me. Ashutosh, anything else for you? No, sounds good to me. All right, thanks to all of you. Recording good meeting. should be available. Good work by everybody. Hours. I'm yeah, impressed. Well done, Ashutosh. Thanks very, very much.